episode, we're going to talk about how to avoid wrong answer choices when reading the passages in the critical reading section. There are five main principles you should keep in mind. Those are to rephrase the questions and predict the answers, answer the questions being asked of you, find evidence in the passage, remember that extreme answers are suspicious, and lastly, keep in mind that a little wrong is all wrong when it comes to SAT answer choices. Let's look at those five principles in more detail. The first principle we're going to talk about is rephrasing and predicting, and I cannot overstate how important this is when it comes to the critical reading passages. The first step is that you're going to rephrase the question in your own words. A lot of times the so-called questions on the SAT are actually statements that haven't quite finished. So turn them into questions that end in question marks and that you understand. You don't literally have to write them, but you should be able to say them to yourself as questions. Once you've rephrased the question in a way that works for you, then you should go to wherever you're told to look. It's either a line or a series of lines usually, and read two lines before and after that place. Afterwards, you should answer your question, the one you've rephrased, in your own words, and then make sure you do that based on what you just read. Lastly, find the answer choice that best matches your prediction among the answer choices that are available to you. Now, why do you have to do this process? Here we go. First of all, rephrasing the question forces you to make sure you really understand it. Because the SAT is so confusing, it's easy to try to answer a question that you haven't even taken the time to really understand. So this makes you take the time, and that's a good thing. Next up, reading two lines before and after forces you to draw conclusions based on specific evidence. And because it's very important to choose answer choices that are driven by evidence, that's what right answers have, evidence in the passage, this forces you to really look for that evidence. And finally, answering the question in your own words instead of just reading through the answer choices looking for one that pops out keeps you from being influenced or manipulated by the answer choices because the SAT test writers are really good at coming up with the answer choices that are going to be appealing if you haven't already figured out exactly what you're looking for. The next strategy I want to talk about is answering the question. Believe it or not, true doesn't make an answer choice right. And here's a really silly example, but one that I hope hits home with you. If you saw a question on the SAT, and you won't, <laughs> that says, who was the first president of the United States? Um, one kind of answer you might get is 2 plus 2 equals 4. Now, you're not actually going to get the answer to a math problem on the SAT passages, but the idea here is that 2 plus 2 equals 4 is true, and you need to remember that doesn't mean it's the right answer. Obviously, it's going to be more tricky on the SAT, but don't go for an answer choice just because it's true. True is not the same as the right answer, even if it's sort of on topic. For instance, this guy says the first president of the United States took office in 1789. It's a little closer to being related to the question, but it's still not answering the question. This is also true, but it's not right because it's not answering the question. Now, obviously on the SAT, it's going to be a little more complicated than that, and it's not going to look like math, and they aren't going to be history questions, but it'll look a little more like this. You might have a question that says, hey, what's the purpose of the passage you just read? And an answer choice might be not telling you what the purpose is, but just parroting back information that you covered in the passage. And because it's familiar and because it's true, you might be drawn to it.